Hello, everyone, and welcome to the special CUBE conversation with Matt Burr, who's the general manager of Flashblade at Pure Storage. Matt, how are you doing? Good to see you. I'm doing great. Nice to see you again. Uh, nice to see you again, Dave. Yeah, you know, welcome back. We're, we're going to be broadcasting this as at Accelerate. You guys get big news. Of course, Flashblade S, we're going to dig into it. The famous Flashblade now has a, a new letter attached to it. Tell us what it is, what it's all about. Uh, you know, it, it's easy to say it's just the latest and greatest version of uh, of, of the Flashblade, uh, but obviously it's a lot more than that. Um, you know, we've had a lot of success with Flashblade uh, kind of across the board, in particular with Meta and their research supercluster, which is one of the largest AI superclusters in the world. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's not enough to just build on uh, the thing that you had, right? So, you know, with the Flashblade S, we've increased modularity, um, you know, we've done things like, you know, building uh, co-design software and hardware and leveraging that into something that increases or actually doubles uh, density, uh, performance, uh, power efficiency. Um, on top of that, you can it's, you can uh, scale independently storage, networking, and compute, which is a pretty big deal because it gives you more flexibility, gives you a little more granularity around performance or capacity, depending on which direction you want to go. And we believe that you know, kind of the end of this is 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 fundamentally the, um, I guess the way to put it is uh, sort of the highest performance and capacity optimization, uh, unstructured data platform on the market today, uh, without the need for you know, kind of an, an, an expensive data tier of cash or an expected data caching tier. So we're pretty excited about uh, about what we've ended up with here. Yeah. So I think sometimes people forget, you know, about how much core engineering Meta does. Facebook, you know, you go on Facebook and play around and put, post things. But yeah, their their back end cloud is just amazing. So talk a little bit more about the the problem targets for Flashblade. I mean, it's pretty wide scope, and we're going to get into that. But what's the core of that? Yeah, we talked about um, you know we've we've talked about that uh, extensively in the past. The use cases you know kind of generally remain the same. Um, I know I know we'll, we'll we'll probably explore this a little bit more deeply, but you know really what we're talking about here is performance and scalability. Um, we have written essentially an unlimited uh, metadata uh, software level, which gives us the ability to expand. Uh, you know, to, to an, we're already starting to think about computing in exabyte scale. Okay, so you know the problem that the customer has a hey, I've got a greenfield, you know, object environment, or you know, I've got a I've got a, a file environment, and you know, my my 10k and 7500 RPM disk is just spiraling out of control in my environment. Um, it's an environmental problem. Uh, it's a management problem. You know, we've effectively you know simplified the process of bringing together highly performant, very large, multi petabyte to you know eventually exabyte scale um, unstructured data systems. So people are obviously trying to inject uh, machine intelligence, AI, ML into applications, bring data into applications, bringing those worlds closer together. Analytics is, is obviously exploding. You see some other things happening in the news, ransomware, you know, protection and the like. Yeah. Where does Flashblade fit in terms of Flashblade S in some, terms of some of these new use cases? All those things, um, you know, we're we're only going wider and broader. So, you know, we've talked uh, in the past about having a, having a horizontal approach to this market. Um, mm -hmm. The unstructured data market has has often had vertical specificity. You can see uh, successful infrastructure companies in oil and gas that may not play in media and entertainment, where you see you know successful companies that play in media and entertainment but don't play well in financial services, for example. You know, we we're sort of playing the long game here with this, and we're focused on you know bringing an all QL architecture um, that combines, you know, our, our traditional kind of pure, you know, DFM uh, with the software that is, you know, now I guess seven years hardened uh, from from um, you know from the original Flashblade system. And so, you know, when we look at customers and we look at you know kind of customers in three categories, right? We have customers that sort of fit into a very traditional we have more than three, but they're kind of being bucketized this way. Um, customers that fit into kind of this EDA HPC space. 
then you have that sort of data protection, which I believe kind of ransomware falls under that as well. You know, the, the world has changed, right? So customers want their data back faster. Rapid restore is a real thing, right? We have customers that come to us and say, anybody can back up my data, but if I want to get something back fast, and I mean in less than a week or a couple of days, what do I do? So we can, we can solve that problem. And then as you sort of accurately pointed out where you started, there is the AI ML side of things where, you know, the, the NVIDIA relationship that we have, right? DGXs are a pretty powerful weapon in that, in that market and solving those problems. And, uh, but they're not cheap. And keeping those DGXs running all the time uh, requires an extremely efficient uh, you know, underpinning of a, of, a, of a flash system. And we believe we have that market as well. It's interesting when you know, Pure was first coming out as a startup, you obviously had some cool new tech, but you know, your stack wasn't as hard. Now you've got seven years under your belt. The last time you were on theCUBE, we, we talked about some of the things that you guys were, were doing differently. Uh, the, we talked about UFFO, Unified Fast File and Object. How does this new product, FlashBlade S, compare to some previous generations of, of, of FlashBlade in terms of solving unstructured data and some of these other trends that we've been talking about? Yeah, you know, I, I touched on this a little bit earlier, um, but I want to go a little bit deeper on this concept of modularity. So for those that are familiar with pure storage, um, you know, we, we have what's called the, the evergreen storage program. Um, it's not as much a program as it is an engineering philosophy, the belief that everything we build should be modular in nature so that we can have essentially a, a, a chassis uh, that, that has 100% modular components inside of it, such that we can upgrade all of those features non-disruptively um, from one version to the next. You should think about that as, you know, if you have an iPhone, when you go get a new iPhone, what do you do with your old iPhone? You either throw it away or you sell it. Well, imagine if your iPhone just got newer and better each time you renewed your, you know, whatever it is, two year or three year subscription with Apple. That's effectively what we have as a core philosophy, core operating engineering philosophy within Pure. That is now um, a completely full and robust program with this instantiation of, 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 of the flash blade S. And so, you know, kind of what that, what that means is, you know, for a customer, I'm future proofed for, you know, X number of years, knowing that we're going to, we have a run rate of being able to keep customers in, in on the flash array side from the FA 400 all the way through the flash array X and XL, which is a, about a 10 year time span. So, you know, that then and of itself sort of starts to play into uh, customers that have concerns around ESG, right? Uh, last time I checked, power, space, and cooling still mattered in data centers, although I have people that tell me all the time that power, space, and cooling doesn't matter anymore. Um, but I know at the end of the day, uh, most customers seem to say that it does. You're not throwing away refrigerator-sized um, you know, pieces of equipment that once held spinning disk. You know, something that's the size of a microwave that's populated with DFMs with all QLC flash uh, that you can actually upgrade over time. So if you want to scale more performance, we can do that through adding CPU. If you want to scale more capacity, we can do that through adding more NAND. And we're in control of those parameters because we're building our own DFMs, our direct traffic modules and our own storage nodes, if you will. So instead of relying on the consumer packaging of an SSD, uh, we're, we're upgrading our own stuff and growing it as we can. So again, on the ESG side, I think for many customers going into the next decade, it's going to be a huge deal. Yeah, interesting comments, man. I mean, I don't know if you guys invented it, but you certainly popularized the idea of you know, no forklift upgrades and sort of set the industry you know, on its head when you guys really drove that evergreen strategy. And you know, kind of on that note, you guys talk about Simplicity. I remember last accelerate. You know, I went deep with cause on your philosophy of keeping things simple, keeping things uncomplicated. You guys talk about using better science to to do that. And you, a lot of talk these days about outcomes. Um, how, how does Flashblade S support those those claims? And what do you guys mean by better science? Yeah, you know, better science is kind of a funny term. It was a, it was an internal term that um, I was on a sales call actually, and 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 the customer said, well, you know, I understand the difference between these two, but could you tell me how we 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 got there? 
And I was a little stumped on the answer. And I just said, well, I think we have better scientists. Um, and that kind of morphed into morphed into better science. You know, a, a good example of that is our metadata architecture, right? So, you know, our scalable metadata allows us to uh, avoid having uh, that, you know, that 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 caching tier uh, that other architectures have to rely on in order to anticipate, um, you know, which files are going to need to be in 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 read cache and read misses become become, become very expensive. Now, you know, the, the a good follow up question there, not to do your job, but it's the question that I always get is, well, when you're designing your own hardware and your own software, you know, what are, what's the real material advantage of that? Well, the real material advantage of that is that you're in control of the combination and the interaction of those two things. You don't give up, um, you know, sort of the general purpose nature, if you will, of uh, the performance characteristics that come along with things like commodity. You get a long, you get a very specific performance profile that's tailored to the software uh, that that's being that's being married to it. Now, in some instances, you can say, well, okay, does that really matter? Well, when you start to talking about 20, 40, 50, 100, 500, you know, petabyte data sets, every percentage matters. And so that, and those individual percentages equate to space savings. Um, they equate to power and cooling savings. You know, we believe that we're going to have industry best uh, dollars per watt. We're going to have industry best, you know, kind of dollar per RU. So, you know, really the whole kind of game here is, is, is around scale. I mean, look, there's there's clearly places for the pure software to find. I mean, when cloud first came out, everybody said, oh, build, build the cloud and commodity. They don't, build, they don't build custom hardware. Now you see all the hyperscalers building, you know, custom software, custom hardware and software integration, custom silicon. So co-innovation between hardware and software, it seems you know, pretty as important, if not more important than ever, especially for some of these new workloads, who knows what the, what the edge is going to bring. Um, what, what what's the downside of of not having that philosophy in your view? Is it just you can't scale to the degree that you want? You can't support the new workloads or performance? What what's what should customers be thinking about there? I think the downside plays in two ways. Um, you know, first is you know kind of the future and at scale, as I alluded to earlier, around you know cost and you know just savings over time, right? So if you're using a, a you know a, a, a commodity SSD, there's packaging around that SSD that is wasteful, both in terms of both waste, wasteful in the environmental sense uh, and wasteful in the sort of computing performance sense. So that's you know kind of kind of one thing. Um, but on the second side is it, it's easier for us to control the controllable around reliability when you can eliminate the number of things that actually sit in that workflow. And by workflow, I mean, when a, when a, when a write is acknowledged from a host and it gets down to the media, the more control you have over that, the more reliability you have over that piece. Yeah, I know, and we talked about ESG earlier. I know you guys, I'm going to talk a little bit about more news from Accelerate with NVIDIA. I mean, you've certainly heard Jensen talk about the wasted CPU cycles in the data center. I mean, I think he's forecast that you know 25 to 30 percent of the cycles are wasted on doing things like storage offload or certainly networking and, and security. So now it sort of confirms your ESG thought. We can do things more efficiently. But but as it relates to Nvidia and some of the news around you know AES, what, what is what is the AI RI? What's that stand for? What's the high level overview of ARI? So the so the ARI um, has been really successful for both us and Nvidia. It's a really great partnership. Um, you know, we're 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 appreciative of the partnership. In fact, Tony Packaday will be you know speaking here uh, at Accelerate. So you know, really 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 looking forward to that. Um, you know, look, I, there's there's a couple ways to to look at this, and you know, I take the macro view on this. Um, I know I know that there's a equally as good of a of a of a micro example, but I think the macro is really kind of where it's at, which is we don't have data center space anymore, right? There's only so many data centers we can build. There's only so much power we can create. Um, you know, we're, we're going to reach a point in time where municipalities are going to struggle against the businesses that are in their municipalities for power. And now you're essentially bidding, you know, big corporations against people who have an electric bill. 
And that's only going to last so long. You know who doesn't win in that? The big corporation doesn't win in that because elected officials will have to find a way to serve the people so that they can get power. No matter how skewed we think that may be, that is the reality. And so as we look at this transition, the first decade of, 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 of this, the flash transition was really, um, you know, in the, in the block world. The second decade, which it's really fortunate to have a multi-decade company, of course, um, but the second decade of riding that wave from, from, from disk to, to, to flash is about improving space, power, efficiency, and density. And we sort of reached that, you know, it, it's a long way of getting to the point about NVIDIA where, you know, these AI clusters are extremely powerful things. And, you know, they're only going to get bigger, right? They're not going to get smaller. It's not like anybody out there is saying, oh, it's a bad or, you know, this isn't going to be something that's going to yield any results or outcomes. They, they yield tremendous outcomes in healthcare. They, use treme they yield tremendous outcomes in financial services. They use, you know, tremendous outcome in cancer research, right? These are, these are not things that, you know, we as a society are, are going to give up. And in fact, we're going to want to invest more in them. But they come at a cost. And they come, one of the resources that, that is required is power. And so when you look at what we've done uh, in particular with NVIDIA, um, you found something that is extremely power efficient that meets the needs of kind of going back to that macro view of both the community and, and the business. It's a win-win. You know, and, the, and you're right. It's not going to get smaller. It's just going to continue to gain momentum. But it, but it could get increasingly distributed and, and, and you know, you think about we talk, I talked about the edge earlier. You think about AI inferencing at the edge. And I think about Bitcoin mining. It's very distributed, but it consumes a lot of power. And so, so we don't we're not exactly sure what the what the next level architecture is, but but we do know that that science is going to be behind it. We'll talk a little bit more about your Nvidia relationship because I think you guys were the first. I might be wrong about this, but I think you were the first storage company to announce a partnership with with Nvidia. Uh, several years ago, probably four years ago. Uh, how is this new solution with Ari Slash S building on that partnership? What can we expect with NVIDIA going forward? Yeah, you know, I think what you can what you can expect to see um, is 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 putting the foot on the gas on kind of where we've been uh, with Nvidia. So, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, Meta is you know um, by some measurements the world's largest research supercluster. They're a huge um, they're a huge uh, Nvidia customer, and you know, built on built on pure infrastructure. So we see you know kind of those types of well reference architectures. Not that everyone's going to have a Meta scale reference. architecture, architecture, but the base principles of what they're solving for are the base principles of what we're going to begin to see in the enterprise. I, I know that begin sounds like a strange word because, you know, there's already a big business in DGX, there's already a, a sizable business in, you know, performance on structured data, but those are only going to get, you know, exponentially bigger from here. So, you know, kind of what we see is a deepening and a strengthening of the, of, of the relationship and opportunity for us to um, talk, you know, jointly to customers that are going to be building these big facilities and big data centers for you know these types of, of, of compute related problems and talking about efficiency right DGXs are, are much more efficient um, and 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 flash blades are, are much more efficient it's a great pairing yeah I mean you, you're definitely I mean a lot of AI today is modeling in the cloud you're seeing H, HPC and data just slam together uh, all kinds of new use cases and these types of partnerships are the only way that we're going to solve you know, the future problems and go after these future opportunities. I'll, I'll give you a last word. You got to be excited with, with, with Accelerate. You know, what should people be looking for, you know, at Accelerate and beyond? You know, look, I, I, I am really excited. Uh, this is um, my going on my 12th year at Pure Storage, uh, which has to be seven or eight accelerates whenever we started this thing. So it's a great it's a great time of the year. I guess maybe take a couple off because of because of COVID. But, um, you know, I, I love reconnecting uh, in particular with, with with partners and customers and just hearing, you know, kind of what they have to say. And, and this is kind of a nice one. This is uh, this is four years or five years worth of work for, you know, my team who, you know, can't. I'm extremely proud of for you know choosing to take on some of the solutions that they 
or excuse me, some of the problems that they chose to take on and find solutions for. So, um, you know, as Accelerate rolls around, I, I, you know, I think we have some pretty interesting um, uh, evolutions of the Evergreen program uh, coming to be announced. Uh, you know, we have some we have some exciting uh, announcements in the in the other product arenas as well. But um, you know, the big one for this event is 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 Flashblade, and you know, I think that uh, we will see. Look, no one's gonna no one's gonna completely control this trend transition from disk to flash, right? That's a, that's a macro trend. But there are these points in time where individual companies can sort of accelerate the pace at which it's happening. And that happens through cost, it happens through performance. My personal belief is this will be one of the largest points of those types of acceleration in this, trans, in this transformation from, from disk to flash and unstructured data. This is such a leap. Um, you know, this is essentially the equivalent of us going from the 400 series on the block side uh, to the X, for those of you who are familiar with the flash array line. So it's a huge, huge leap for us. Um, I think it's a huge leap for the market. And, you know, I, look, I, I think you should be proud of the company you work for. And I am, you know, immensely proud of, of, of what we've created here. And um, I think one of the things that is a good joy in life is to be able to talk to customers about things you care about. I've always told people my whole life, uh, Inefficiency is the bane of my existence, and uh, I think we've I think we've rooted out a, a ton of inefficiency with this product. And uh, looking forward to going and reclaiming a bunch of data data center space and, and power without without sacrificing any performance. Well, con congratulations on making it into the second decade, and I'm looking forward to the orange in the third decade. Matt Burr, thanks so much for coming back <laughs> in the cube. It's good to see you. Thanks, Dave. Nice to see you as well. We appreciate it. All right, and thank you for watching. This is Dave Vellante for the Cube, and we'll see you next time.